set of uh, looking at all of the information that comes before us, uh, considering it, and doing our best uh, to vote the right way always. Uh, also, uh, we, we ask your uh, continued blessings on our administration and all of the people, the good people of St. Tammany Parish. And as always, all of our armed forces throughout the world. Amen. 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 <coughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic with which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Ford, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Dean? Here. Mr. Sharp? Here. Mr. Thompson? Here. Mr. Falconer? Here. Mr. Tanner? Here. Mr. Groby? Here. Mr. Gould? Here. Mr. Canulet? Here. Mr. Belisario? Here. Ms. O'Brien? Mr. Swanzik? Mr. Bender? Here. Mr. Arteague? Mr. Smith? Here. You have a quorum. Ah, very good. Okay, first item. Uh, I'd like to, uh, with your indulgence, move up item number two, proclamation by the parish president in recognition uh, of the 40th anniversary of the state Committee for Employer Support of the Guard and Reserve, which uh, was established by the Department of Defense. It's an item by Mrs. Brister, and I believe uh, Ms. O'Brien has uh, requested that we move this forward. Okay. Vote with your lights. Ms. Brister. Thank you very much, uh, council members, for, for moving that up. Um, we are here tonight with a proclamation, whereas the Army National Guard, the Air National Guard, the Army Reserve, the Air Force Reserve, the Navy Reserve, the Marine, Marine Corps Reserve, and the Coast Guard Reserve constitute a vital and ever more important part of our nation's defense, and whereas members of the National Guard and Reserve are citizen warriors, who lead dual lives as workers, managers, professionals, and students throughout our community, and as, as members of our nation's armed forces, train and maintain their military skills so they can answer, for, answer the call to serve in military security operations at home and abroad, as well as provide humanitarian aid at home, and whereas President Richard Nixon on June 22, 1972, authorized the Secretary of Defense to create the National Committee for Employer Support of the Guard and Reserve, ESGR, and the Department of Defense established the State Committee for Employer Support of the Guard and Reserve, and whereas for 40 years, ESGR has promoted and facilitated a strong culture of mutually beneficial relationships between employers and their military employees, thereby enabling members of the, Coast, of the Guard and Reserve to respond quickly to state disaster emergencies and national military necessities, knowing they have a secure civilian career after their service. Now, therefore, I, Patricia Brister, as pre Parish President of St. Tammany, do hereby gratefully acknowledge the 40th anniversary of the employer support of the Guard and Reserve and especially the State Committee of Employer Support of the Guard and Reserve. And I thank them and the 100 volunteer members for their outstanding service to state's employers and their employee members of the National Guard and Reserve. By Patricia Brister, St. Henry Parish. Thank you very much. And Mr. Rogers is here to accept that. Mr. Gavin didn't, didn't make it, but if you'd like to say just a couple words. I would, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for this recognition for the, for the committee. And thank you for being the kind of employer that we can hold up to other employers uh, that do it right. Uh, St. Tammany Parish has always had the right uh, HR policies 
and the right frame of mind to treat their guardsmen and reservists, men and women, uh, as they should be treated. And we do hold you up from time to time as an example. So thank you for the recognition and for walking the walk. Thank you. Okay, next item, a certificate of ref, uh, excuse me, a certificate of recognition to Spencer Donovan Bogran uh, for earning the rank of Eagle Scout. Mr. Stefanzi? <clears throat> yes, Spencer couldn't be here tonight. Uh, he has earned the, uh, the, uh, the award of Eagle Scout and the Boy Scouts, and his award ceremony is going to be this Sunday, and I want to read this tonight, and I'm going to deliver this to him uh, before either during his presentation Sunday or before, but this young man got a job and he's doing his, his orientation tonight on the new job, and so uh, <clears throat> he could not be here tonight and he's going to be gone in August. So between those two, we figured out we'd just go ahead and uh, present this or read it tonight and then present it to him uh, on Sunday at his award ceremony. St. Tammany Parish Government Certificate of Recognition the Parish Council would like to acknowledge the recipient of the prestigious Eagle Scout Honor of Boy Scouts. We take pride in, in acknowledging our younger generation for their dedication, achievements, and active pursuit of leadership roles. The Parish Council recognizes Spencer Donovan Bogren for his commitment to Boy Scouts, uh, Troop 365, I'm sorry, for his commitment to Boy Scouts, school, community, society, and self. We look forward to how your insights and commitments can contribute to the future. The certificate of recognition was unanimously approved by the Parish Council on July 12, 2012, signed by a prayer of President Pat Brister and myself. And I will be presenting this to Spencer on, on his award ceremony Sunday. Thank you. All right, I have been asked to uh, move up off the floor item number one uh, for a presentation by President <laughs> Brister. So I need to uh, ask someone to make a motion to open up the, the so off the floor items. Okay, I have a motion in a second. We're going to need a unanimous vote to open up off the floor. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Okay. Uh, item number one. Presentation by President Brister on projects completed during her first six months in office as well as current and new projects. Mrs. Brister. Thank you, Judge. Thank you very much. I wanted to take uh, an opportunity after six months or seven months, one month extra, to kind of get you up to date on what's been going on, where we are, and some of the accomplishments. First, uh, the projects completed. The Bayou Chinchuba Retention Pond, that's on Highway 59 in Mandeville. The Abita River Sub-Basin Pond on Harrison Road. Third, the Southeast Hospital Property Acquisition, which is a drainage uh, improvement with Cast Bayou Castine and Kane. The Slidell Levee Section 2A, east of Highway 11 and north of Oak Harbor, Oak Harbor Boulevard. Number five is the trace connection to Pelican Park. Six is opening of the fishing pier, which has been fantastic, and I have some July numbers here that um, total visitors this, um, in May and June, I have, is 12,764. And then in July, visitors 1,335. So it's been a huge success, and the only slow days have been three stormy days. And those days we had 72, 78, and 64, even in the stormy weather. So we can certainly say it's been a success and will even get bigger and better. We also have the Holiday Square turn lanes off 190. These are projects that have, been, have begun but not finished. The TMDL plan, it's active, we're actively working with DEQ at this point. Number two is the East House Beach Road. The road raising construction should start in August. Number three is the Huntwick, Huntwick Village drainage. Its construction contract has already been awarded. 
and this includes internal drainage improvements, including a pump station. Number four is a Cypress Bayou detention pond. It's under construction and is approximately 60% complete. Number five is the Associated Wholesale Grocers Roads off Old Military Road and 84 Lumber Road. They're, those are improvements and are under construction. The turn lanes at Military and Clio will be uh, out for bids uh, soon. Number six is Reno Hill Sewer Improvements. Design is complete and the construction project will be put out for bid soon. Number seven, economic development. We were very happy to get the two bills passed that we asked for, S uh, Senate Bill 313, which is a funding bill, and Bill 617, which changes the makeup of the Economic Development District, not the Economic Development Foundation Board, but the District Board. There are two, and they're, they're uh, a bit different. Number eight is the CDL language amendment, Senator Mary Landrieu, uh, worked with us to get some language in that we may, we hope will help us get uh, reimbursed for that that amount uh, of uh, money. There was um, she she made the changes from three years to possibly five or seven years that you can look at the the um, revenues that we use to or that the federal government used to make their decision not to reimburse us for that. But it is under appeal and we're still waiting. Number nine is the Meadow Lake Pond Improvements. And the notice to uh, proceed has been issued and the construction's about to commence there. Projects that are ready to go, Fish and Pier Phase Two, much more to come. The Fairgrounds Edition uh, funding, the capital outlay funds included in the appro appropriation bill for expansion of facilities. We're awaiting a CEA with the state to access that funding. And here's one we've all heard about before and been waiting for, for and that's the W14 Canal District core report has been signed. That took um, quite a while. It began in 1996 and um, the engineering began actively pursuing it in 2006. We need one more signature. It shouldn't take that long. It's by the division commander and we should have that by the end of the month and we can request federal funding to go forward with that project. And I know all of you are happy to hear about that. Number four is the Slidell Levy Section 3A. It's in design, it's, it is designed and a CEA with the drainage district number five is underway and it's directly across I-10 from Oak Harbor Ring Levy. Number five is the St. Tammany Parish Airport Improvements. The design is complete and plans are being reviewed for, for, by FAA for overlay of the existing runway. More projects ready to go. The Covington Federally Qualified Health Center. We have one in Slidell that's been very successful. We will be opening one uh, at the fairgrounds in Covington. Labar Street Retention Pond. A notice to proceed has been issued and the contractor has begun construction. We have four new projects, Louisiana 59 tunnel for the trace and, and the S curve. Uh, we'll design this with uh, our local funds and DOTD will construct with state funds. Louisiana 59 at Sharp, a roundabout. We'll design this the same way with our local funds and DOTD will construct with state fu uh, funds. Louisiana 59 at Lonesome Road, a roundabout, the same there. And number four is the Slidell Levy, the Eden Isles modeling. Those are the list of projects that have been complete, ready to start or have been started, which I, I have to say, when you look at all the work that's going on around this parish, you can be very proud of, of all of the employees here that worked so hard to get it done. And, and I want to thank the council members particularly for their cooperation in helping us get these going and get, a, get everything uh, completed on time or as much on time as we could. We appreciate your cooperation. That one more thing, and that is um, I want to give a quick storm season update. The parish uh, entered into the pre-position contracts for emergency response related activities. Everything from emergency road clearing to portalettes has been considered and is ready to go should we need it this storm season. Actually, we all know, we hope we don't. 
The bid for the debris removal was let in the spring of 2011. Stranco was the low bidder of the six respondents. The initial contract was for one year and it was extended for a second year in March 2012 according to the contract that was bid. Other contracts include emergency road clearing, <coughs> excuse me, monitoring of debris removal activities, environmental services, auxiliary service for the assessment of sewer and water, engineering services to assess the parish office building prior to re-entry, medical support for special needs shelter, communications including emergency call services, <coughs> and each of these were procured over the last two years by a public bid and an RFP process. In, in following the F, uh, FEMA guidelines and regulations. So I think we are well prepared. Hopefully we won't need it, but I appreciate the time, uh, Mr. Chairman, for letting me give that uh, short, short report. <laughs> <laughs> and well. um, one more thing, I think you probably got this notice today that uh, the Corps has designated the alignment for Highway 3241, and it couldn't be worse. Uh, it's alignment Q, which is uh, just Awful. Runs right through uh, what two or three of our projects. It does, and right smack across across the brand new coroner's building that they are just moving into now would have to be demolished. You, you so know, obviously, it's amazing the lengths that these people will do to stop something. It, it, we have some issues, so <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, moving back onto the regular agenda. Um, from the consent calendar. Any items not pulled from the consent calendar are automatically approved in whole by one vote. <laughs> items pulled by the, from the consent calendar are discussed and voted upon individually. Um, we're going to, I have a list of items to pull at this point uh, I, under ordinances for introduction. Um, number six, uh, that's uh, number 4812, number seven, 4813. Uh, number 9, 4815, number 16, 4822. Uh, now under resolutions, uh, item number 1, C44, uh, excuse me, C3414. Item number 2, uh, C3447. Item number 5, C3450. Item number 6, uh, C-3451, and uh, item number 17, C-3462. Uh, any council members have any other item that would, they would like to pull? Mr. Dean? Uh, item number 12 under uh, ordinances. Not item, not, yeah, it's number 12, 4818. Oh, okay, I've got that marked down. Any others? Any requests from the public, the administration? Okay, I'll take, uh, I'll entertain a motion. Second by uh, Mr. Smith, vote with your lights, please, on the consent calendar. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Okay, first item that was pulled, ordinance calendar number uh, 4812, ordinance to amend Parish Unified Development Code sections 5.29 and sections 5.29A, MD3, MD4, relative to height regulations, buffers, and setbacks. Uh, I would ask someone to, uh, to make a motion to postpone this until September. I have a number of meetings that we need to uh, conduct uh, before we, we come forward. So I have a motion by Mr. Grovey, second by Mr. Thompson, and that'll be, will not come back up until September. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Next item is ordinance calendar number 4813, ordinance to amend the Parish Unified Development Code, section 5.2702 and 5.2802 uh, MD1 and MD2 relative to permitted uses. Uh, we, ha we need to amend this uh, and uh, then introduce. Uh, so I, I need someone to move on the amendment. And second by uh, Mr. Belisario. All right, vote with your lights on the amendment. Motion is 
Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, need a motion to introduce Mr. Dean and second by Mr. Grovey. And it's all we need to do. Okay, next item is ordinance calendar number 4815, an ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 1.97 acres from HC2 to A2 and uh, uh, rural overlay, is that? Yes. Yeah, this is in Ward 8, District 14. I think Mr. there's Smith. an amendment that uh, staff may want to present. Yes, the amendment is, is that it should be, it was a technical error, the property should be rezoned from HC2 to HC2 with a rural overlay. Okay, so it's HC2. So with uh, a rural overlay. So we have a motion by Mr. Smith to amend, second by Mr. Stefancic. Let's vote on the amendment. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Mr. Smith, move to introduce. Second by Mr. Ortiz. Nothing else needs to, to go. All right. Um, number 12, that's correct. I was, knew I was jumping over something. Uh, ordinance calendar number 4818, ordinance to amend St. Tammany Parish Unified Development Code, Volume 1, to add new zoning classification, uh, Section 5.21A uh, HC 2A, Highway Commercial District. Mr. Dean, you asked this to be pulled. Yeah, I was, I was wondering, have we, are we going to schedule more meetings with this? Are we ready to introduce this, or is it, because I know that, I mean, this is HC2A. Right, uh, Mr. Because I know I have a couple of things that I'd Sydney? like to. Uh, we've had a couple of inquiries by council members as to some of the, uh, the details of the ordinance. Uh, but I haven't heard anything about additional meetings that we answered the questions. They were primarily on uh, how does this affect outdoor storage. There is no change in outdoor storage uh, because that's unlimited today under the HC, under existing zoning. So uh, this is very reflective of the HC2 zoning with the exception of the size of the buildings. There have been questions about whether it increases the number of gas pumps at a convenience store. If you look at item two under permitted convenience stores with gas, criteria paragraph one of section 8.01 AX, that is the limitation on the pump number of pumps. Uh, there so were some. Sydney, pump, wait. So the number of pumps would stay the, as it is? It would stay limited as they are. It would mm -hmm. mean. Okay, and I guess that's, that's, that's a question that I'd like to. Should we address that if you're going to kick no. it up, if it's going to be a different thing? I'm just. Because it is, it's limited to eight pumps, and I would just, I just wanted to. Yeah, we that. we left it the same. It, you know, if, if the council wishes to move it up, uh, uh, okay, it didn't. That's entirely within the purview. Uh, the only other major change was in in lodging. We allowed larger uh, uh, hotels, up to 200 rooms in this zoning right. district. I didn't. Uh, the only reason I asked to have this pulled was just to see if we wanted to either table it or just know that we could amend it, and it would be minimal amendments if it has anything to do with the increase of the pumps so I, I okay has this made it through zoning yet yeah it's yeah. it's for introduction and yeah it was recommended as it's okay as it's written so the allowable square foot 75 75 allowable square foot banks for under the hc2 have to be at least 3,000 square feet i suspect that was because uh it, when this was original when ac when the original commercial c2 was written you had a a lot of these kiosk type ATM banks being put up, and that may have been a response to that. Uh, but they, they had to be at least 3,000 square feet. Uh, that was removed. The 200 rooms on hotels were, was changed. Everything else remains exactly the same as the HC2. Mr. Dean? All right, that, that, that's fine. I just know that probably that I'm going to want to take a look at it and possibly make suggestion for amendment okay. when it well, comes up. You want to introduce it? So, yeah. Motion by Mr. Dean, second by Mr. Thompson. Nothing else is required. Okay. Next item, uh, 16, uh, calendar, uh, ordinance calendar number 4822, ordinance amending the parish code of ordinances, ordinances relative to the approval of the uh, final subdivision plat. I have a note that the administration has requested that we remove this. So I need a motion by Mr. Thompson, second by Mr. Grobing uh, to remove. Vote with your lights on the removal. Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, moving on to items uh, under resolutions. Item number one, 
uh, resolution council series number C3414, a resolution to concur, not concur with the, the town of Pearl River annexation and zoning of 2.08 acres. This is Ward 8, District 6. Mr. Tanner. Motion to, uh, till the next meeting. Okay, motion to postpone until the next meeting. Second by Mr. Thompson. Vote with your lights on the postponement. Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, second item, uh, item number two, resolution council series number C3447, a resolution approving the holding of an election in the parish, Waterworks District number two. Um, I believe we have a speaker on this. Yes, sir. Mr. Akers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Jason Akers with Foley New Dells. Pleasure to see all of you again. Uh, Waterworks District Number Two is in between Abita Springs and Covington. I believe it's mostly in Mr. Sharp and uh, Mr. Red's district. So. Uh, the, your resolution before you authorizes the holding of an election to issue $985,000 in general obligation bonds. This is a no tax increase election. Bonds will go out for a maximum of 20 years and uh, they're going to use the proceeds to build a new water well and also to expand capacity uh, of the current water lines within the district. As with any election or uh, bond issue of an underlying district that you approve, this does not in any way, shape, or form bind the parish. It's only binding the district itself to repay the bonds should they be issued. Be glad to answer any questions, and Mr. Signali with the district is available to answer any questions about the district as well. Any questions from the council? All right, motion by Mr. Thompson, second by Mr. Sharp. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, no one, or one absent. Thank you. Okay, next item, number five, resolution council series number C, 3450. Resolution to concur, not concur with the uh, town of Abita Springs annexation. Uh, and this is, uh, looks like it's in Mr. Tanner's district. Mr. Tanner? So moved, Mr. Motion to... Okay, second by Mr. Groby. Um, one question, uh, has the town of Abita acted on this? Not yet. Have, uh, has it gone to their council? No, it's just been introduced, but it has not been adopted. Okay, All right. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, <coughs> item number six. Resolution Council Series number C3451, resolution to concur, not concur, with the City of Slidell annexation of, and zoning of 0.276 acre. Uh, it's Ward 8, District 8. Mr. Canulet? Yes, I have one question, um, either staff or Mike. Has all the requirements been met for the annexation? Yes. So moved. Second. Vote with your lights, please. Concur. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Okay, next, uh, the last item I believe we have to pull uh, was um, number 17, a resolution council series number C3462, resolution to approve and authorize the parish president to acquire right of way and improvements in State Route Louisiana 3228, known as Asbury Drive. Uh, Mr. Bordelon, uh, can you come up and give us a an update on the information. Uh, it, expl explain for the public uh, what improvements will be made by the state and uh, obligations and such. Yes, sir. Um, this is to take a um, two, two lane highway, Asbury, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we will turn that into a three lane from the service road to US 190 and also include a right turn lane at US 190. Which is uh, where the Whitney Bank's at. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And as part of this, the um, parish is, will assume ownership of the, of the road at that point. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. Um, we're also looking to do um, dra drainage improvements, if we can, with the funding. And so um, this is a, um, a um, program called the Right Size that the state of the D DOTD has implemented, in which they will improve certain state highways um, with the parishes assuming ownership of them. And right. so that's what this how this uh, road also work includes is. Uh, the turning lanes at Sharp Road. Right? <clears throat> on yes, and sir. Off, it does on and off of Sharp Road. Yes, sir. At Sharp Road, 
And uh, again, it will be a three-lane highway or roadway at that point from the east or east service road to US 190. Will include turn lanes at Sharp, and also in addition to a left turn lane, a through lane, it will also include a right turn lane at US 190. Yes, sir. Well, that'll relieve a big bottleneck that's in that area. Seems like all day long. Uh, oh yes, sir. Uh, one question that did come up is: Were well, we going to get credit for taking this road in towards another road? Yes, uh, sir. I did. I did check on that. And should we um, want to do that? Uh, I know there could be, uh, there were some questions that came up about the Bush Highway. Correct. About having to trade miles for that. In other words, the parish would need to incorporate state mileage into its system in order to offset the new mileage from the highway. <clears throat> I have since learned that that's not the case, that the miles are already computed into the state system, so we will not have to trade mileage for that highway, by the way. So, okay, so we, we don't have to Assuming we get a route we prefer, which is not alignment key. Not, not too good right not now. Not at all, sir. <laughs> also, this is in, in a, under a federal program that we qualify for federal dollars for the maintenance of this project, correct? Yes, sir. It's an it's a 80-20 match on it, so in the coming year, should we need to do an overlay on the road or any other work on it, we can apply for federal funds assistance and do an 80-20 match on it. 80% for federal monies, 20% locals. Ms. Bristol, do you want, you want to comment? I, I want to thank you for the efforts that you've made and help us get this. That's going to be a tremendous improvement for that area. I, I will say the state has, uh, was very happy that we did it. It's a pilot program. It's mm -hmm. one of the first and we picked a little bitty short road that we knew we could yes. handle first <laughs> and it may may lead to some others but we will be very careful in in what we do take over because we do know at that point in time they become ours to maintain so right. but this one is ideal for this program we get a lot of bang for their buck that, and i think uh, mr falconer is going to like that i think you have a church up that way well i can tell you there's a big group of methodists that are going to be delighted <laughs> <laughs> With that, Mr. Falcon, do you want to move on this? I certainly will. Thank and you. second by Mr. Dean. Vote with your lights. Yeah, they need to be cleared first. Mr. Bender, Mr. Smith. Okay. There it goes. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Okay, moving on to appeals. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on the council for nine years. Uh, I, we have received uh, a letter withdrawing both appeals on our agenda. This is the first time that we have not had an appeal at a council meeting. I need a motion to remove. Mr. Thompson, second by Mr. Grovey. Mr. What? Mr. Gould, no. excuse me. Can I make a motion to frame them, to frame them, <laughs> and hang them up in the hall? Wait, uh, I'm, I'm being. Oh, well, we remove the appeal, then we concur with with the zoning commission's uh, decision, right? No, I don't think. We okay, need well, let's them. motion to concur with the approval of the zoning commission. So second by Mr. Grovey. Vote with your lights on the concurrence. That's on the first appeal, correct? First appeal. Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, someone needs to move on the introduction. Mr. Dean, second by Mr. Thompson. All right, uh, the second appeal, William uh, Smith appealing zoning commission approval on June 5th, 2012 to rezone 85.311 acres located north of Louisiana Highway 1085 from A3 to TND uh, to A4, A8, uh, and HC1. And we received a letter to remove this uh, appeal, so we need a motion to concur with so the Zoning we, Commission by Mr. Dean, second by Mr. Thompson. Vote with your lights on the concurrence. Mr. Gould, as yes, happy as you are, imagine how happy Mr. Marone is. <laughs> <laughs> Motion is unanimous, one absent. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> we need to introduce him, then uh, okay, we, what? We yeah, we need an uh, uh, introduction of the ordinance, second by Mr. Thompson. It's all we need to do. All right, ordinances for adoption. 
Uh, ordinance calendar number 4771, ordinance to amend the Parish Unified Development Code regarding outdoor advertising. Um, I've got a recommendation to uh, uh, postpone this. It's still pending in zoning, or it may have been approved in zoning, but has, the appeal period has not finished. Second by Mr. Can you let vote with your lights on the postpone until next meeting. Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, ordinance calendar number 4783, ordinance to amend and reenact parish code of ordinances, article 8, uh, regarding dispensing or selling of alcoholic beverages via drive through windows. I have a note we need to amend and adopt. Uh, so we need a motion to amend. Mr. Stefanczyk, second <coughs> by Mr. Canulet. All right, let's vote on the amendment. What, what is the amendment? Well, <laughs> I think there was some clarification. I'm sorry about that. It should be in your packet, and the amendment basically was the definition of open container. Uh, prior to this amendment, the, uh, there was some ambiguity as far as the, uh, how open container was being defined, and uh, now it's being redefined to clarify it. It's only a technical amendment. All right, so we have a motion and a second on the amendment. Vote with your lights on the amendment. Motion is unanimous, one out. Okay, need a motion to uh, uh, adopt by Mr. Sharp, second by Mr. Groby. Vote with your lights on the, on the approval, adoption. Motion passes, 12 yeas, one nay, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 4785, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 2.13 acres from A1 to A1 with the mobile home overlay. This Ward 2, District 2. Mr. Sharp, second by Mr. Thompson. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 4786, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 25,000 square feet from A4A to NC1. This is in Ward 8, District 12. Mr. Bender, motion, second by Mr. Arteague. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 4787, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 22,842 square feet from A4 to A4A, Ward 4, District 7. Mr. Groby. Second by Mr. Sharp. Vote with your lights. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 4788, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify one acre from A1 to A1 with the rural overlay. And this is Ward 1, District 4. Mr. Falconer. So moved. Second by uh, Mr. Dean. Vote with your lights. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 4789, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 2.99 acres from A1 to A2, Ward, Ward 2, District 3. Mr. Thompson, second by Mr. Tanner, vote with your lights. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 4790, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 0.46 acre from A2 to A2. Uh, it, well, it just says A2 to A2. There must be a misprint. And a rural overlay. Okay, it's not printed in there. That's in Ward 6, District 11. In a motion. Okay, by Mr. Stefan's second by Mr. Belisario. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 4791 AA, ordinance to, to extend six months the moratorium for property abutting 
Louisiana Highway 21 Plan Corridor District 1. Mr. Dean, second by Mr. Groby. Vote with your lights. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 4792, ordinance to establish a program to promote affordable work, workforce housing ownership for the needy and, and in cooperation with Habitat for Humanity. Need a motion by, Ms. by Mr. Stefanczyk, second by Mr. Belisario. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 4793, ordinance to authorize the parish president to acquire by donation or by quick claim certain movable or, and immovable assets. Need a motion? Mr. Groby, second by Mr. Canulet. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 4794, ordinance to authorize the parish president to acquire by donation certain parcels, rights of way, and, and or servitudes. I need a motion by Mr. Bender, second by Mr. Smith. Vote with your lights. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number, thir uh, number 4795, ordinance to authorize the parish president to acquire certain parcels, rights of way, and or servitudes from M Properties LLC for future road expansion. I need a motion by Mr. Thompson, second by Mr. Canulet. Vote with your lights. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 4796AA, ordinance to amend parish code of ordinances, section 2-091 and section 2-092 for the re reorganization of parish uh, departments. I believe we have an amendment uh, needs to be made. Uh, we discussed those, and you should have it in your packet right here. So I need a motion to amend. Second by Mr. Stefanczyk. <coughs> Vote with your lights. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Ordinance calendar. Oh. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 40. Oh, I'm sorry, you're correct. Motion to approve by Mr. Sponsic, second by Mr. Belisario. Vote with your lights on the approval. Two separate votes. Motion is <coughs> unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 4797, ordinance to correct the road drainage inventory in wards 1, 2, 5, and 10, districts 2, 3, and 6. Motion by Mr. Tanner, second by Mr. Sharp. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Excuse me. Ordinance calendar number 4798, ordinance accepting finalized subdivisions into the uh, road and drainage inventories in wards three and four, districts three, five, and seven. I need a motion. Mr. Thompson, second by Mr. Grovey. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 4799, ordinance to amend the 2012 operating budget, amendment number five. I need a motion. Belisario, second by Mr. Canulet. Vote with your lights. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Right. Ordinance calendar number 4800, ordinance to amend parish code of ordinances, chapter nine, regarding expanding the boundaries of garbage district one. I need a motion and a second, and then I believe there'll be some discussion. Second by Mr. Canulet. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Um, is there any public comment regarding this? Okay, come to the mic and please uh, state your name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Farrah Cedar, and my address is 105 Golden Pheasant Drive, Seidel 70461. I am asking that you table this vote for several reasons. First of all, I believe that we did not have time to let the neighborhood know of um, this vote coming up 
and what their rights are in regards to this. Also, um, many efforts have been made on behalf of Mr. Jean Bilisario and her homeowners association president to notify the public. However, our neighborhood is mostly made up of elderly citizens who do not have access to the internet. And as we are a republic, not a democracy, every vote should count. And I am actually volunteering myself to go door to door and get all of the votes in on paper by these people by the time of your next meeting or if you would grant me 30 days to do so, I would appreciate it. Also, I am requesting that this not be voted on until a contract showing exactly what the parish is going to be signing on with these companies is written out and delivered to us by request. Also, not before the ordinance is fixed and amended with all of the concerns that we have put up. Our concerns include, but are not limited to, Section 9-072.03, additional authority, C, lien for non-payment on service charge, and Article 8, enforcement, penalties, fees, Section 9-060.00, inspection, which speaks about the parish employees or designees searching any property that has anything to do with the garbage service. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Good evening, President Brewster, council members. My name is Richard Dillon. I live at 147 Golden Pheasant, Slidell, Louisiana, 70461. I am the president of the Homeowners Association, the Old River Road Homeowners Association. And over the past 18 months, um, Jean Belisario, our council member, has held 18 meetings. During 16 of those meetings, he discussed this topic um, he emailed the agendas out for those prior to the meetings, and I forwarded those agendas to all of the members of the Homeowners Association. In addition, I had uh, two HOA meetings uh, during the past year, during which I invited Mr. Belisario to come and speak about this topic, and he did. Um, and. Um, then following that, I posted a sign on our bulletin board which addressed or announced a garbage service meeting on the 10th of July last Tuesday. The, meeting, the uh, sign was up for about a week, possibly longer. Um, and on there, it provided information on how to obtain a ballot. I had sent out a survey a little over a week ago um, to all of the homeowners association members that I have an email address for, which is approximately in excess of 300, almost 400 um, addresses. Um, I sent out multiple notices requesting that they complete the ballot and or come to the meeting and complete the ballot. The meeting was held on the 10th, as I mentioned. There were 38 people present. Prior to the meeting, I had received a total of 34 ballots from uh, residents electronically. 26 of those were for this proposal, eight were against. Um, at the meeting, prior to the meeting started, I received three additional ballots uh, hand delivered to me that were for the me measure. And then following the meeting, after Gene and um, Greg Gordon addressed all of the questions that were introduced by the, uh, the attendees, there were 11 additional ballots that were turned in, all of which were for the proposal. So we had a total of 45 ballots that were turned in, of which only eight were against this proposal and those were turned in electronically to me prior to the meeting. Um, finally, that shows that 83% of the personnel, or the, the, the residents that participated in the survey were for this measure. And in addition, um, we have approximately 440 homes in the, in the subdivision in all of our communities. And um, we had 45 people vote, which was about 10%. And 
this is pretty analogous of the participation that we've had in the two years that I've been president of participation in the homeowners meetings. More importantly, however, I think that this demonstrates a typical representation of voting in a non-presidential election. I don't think we have much more than that um, number of people vote or percentage of people vote for anything dealing with normal activities in their lives except for presidential elections. So I would ask that you do go ahead and vote for this and that you approve it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I believe I had saw another hand. Come on up. Please state your name and your address for the record, please. My name is Gordon Bright. I'm at uh, 225 Partridge Road in Coil Ridge. To begin with, I would venture to say that if we only had 45 respondents out of 480 residents in the area, there's a communication problem. Secondly, I bring up the solid waste management plan, and this is following the solid waste management plan for the parish. Now, I've been told the parish should take that off their bulletin board because it's no longer valid. But every time I look at what's going on in the solid waste district, <coughs> excuse me, we're addressing what's taking place laid out by this solid waste management plan. Now, if this solid waste management plan is not valid, then it needs to be removed and it needs to be done away with by the parish council and the president. The last thing I would bring up is that you've got a problem in the Quail Ridge area because most of those residents, uh, half, at least half of the residents, are not on their city water program. They're on uh, wells and septic uh, uh, processing plants themselves, and they're not served by the utility that does the billing. Now, if Crossgate Utilities is going to do the billing, I've been told it's going to be by coastal waste themselves. If the parish is going to enter into this contract, for that subdivision, then the parish is going to have to litigate the contract, the parish is also going to have to administer the contract, and they're going to have to enforce the contract. Now, we've been told that this contract is only being done by the parish for the subdivision, but that the individuals who are members of the subdivision are the ones that are going to have to be billed directly by coastal waste. Now, Crossgates does the billing under the utility. If coastal waste is going to do it, it's going to be a departure. Now, this management plan also says that we're going to piggyback off of Co Crossgate's contract. It sounds to me like we're going to have a separate contract, not the Crossgate's contract. And it's going to have to de be defined how you're going to do the billing because Crossgate's does it through their utility and you've only got a utility serving so many homes within that subdivision. The utility doesn't serve them all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bright. Um, any other comment from the public? Okay, I'm going to close the floor and open it up. Uh, Gene? Yes, sir. What you've heard is confusion. What we're talking about is St. Tammany Parish, back in 2009, established a garbage collection district on Military Road north to south. Within that, in 2009, we moved forward and established a contract under the Crossgate utility system where the billing and collected would be done by them. Once that was in operation for more than six months, we determined how successful it was. I was getting, and still am getting, as of today, complaints from people that they're not in that district. What they're looking for is better service at a lower price. And that's what the Crossgate utility system did. It took people who were paying $22 to $28 a month and getting either one trash collection a week or two. They go to $16.25 a month for two trash collections, two green debris pickups, recycling on a Wednesday, and four pickups during the year of either white appliances or large pieces of furniture at no cost. So starting in January of 2011 through June of this year, as you all know, I have my community meetings. It was on there. There was dialogue like you would not believe on this. I had a lot of people saying, why can't we have it now? I said, there's a legal process we've got to follow. I went, this district 
includes 11 subdivisions. Magnolia Forest, northern part, over 83% of the people voted yes, went through the same process. Came down to Lake Village, that was approved. Went to Frenchman's Estates, over 85% of those people who voted went for it. Went to Turtle Creek Phase 5 with their meeting, there was no question there because in Turtle Creek, it is split between Crossgate Utility and Louisiana Water Service. The people in Louisiana Water Service had waste mans or trucks going through there, charging people $6 a month for recycling because they were on Louisiana Water Service, so therefore not part of the contract. In our contract, the people would be in charge of $1.95 for recycling. This is the difference. We look at outright competition, you get what you get. In this contract, we moved forward. What I then did is I went to a subdivision called La Chenier, gave to the president the whole listing of what we were going to do in the contract. They went house by house. 100% of over 30 homes said yes. Went to Dubloom Bayou, which was off of Old River Road. Had meetings there and a vote. That was over 83%. Went to Quail Ridge once, there were 21 people at the first meeting. Went through the process, they voted 18 to 3. The concern was that I had, and Richard agreed, was not enough people. So we went back on for a second time. There were articles in the newspaper, everything you could possibly do to get people other than going door to door. In an election, nobody goes door to door unless you got runners to do it. When we had the meeting Tuesday night, out of this 480 homes, there was a little over 30 people. And the vote was very clear. The 11, people, 11 of those people who had to vote, they voted yes. It's very clear to me that the answer in the move is to go forward. Since then, I had a man write me an email, which I passed out to council members from Lake Village, which was one of the 11 subdivisions. He's tired of waiting. He's saying, I want a lower price. I got a call today from a man, same thing, the move. In fact, one, one guy called me complaining about one of the contractors, and I said, don't worry about that. We're going to go through a public bid process. There will be me and our council chambers with all the uh, companies that want to bid on this. They'll get their package. They'll submit their bids in. We have an open policy where there's a meeting called. All the bids are opened. Then our staff, our legal department purchasing and environmental service, we evaluate everyone to make sure what is the low bid. Then we move forward then to work on the contract, confirm the, hit, the number of the counts of all the homes in the district so that the parish agrees and whoever is the low bid contractor agrees. The uniqueness of this contract is part of what Gordon said, but he, from all the conversations going on, I think he got confused. We cannot use Crossgate's utility system. It only can bill its customers. All the people we're talking about, 1,800 or so, are outside of the utility system. We are going to use what waste management and what ISI uses or other companies where they give you a sticker. You prepay. That's what we're going to use for this contract. And we're pushing that down to uh, the contractor to go out there and do that. The parish will have no involvement because one of the concerns has been is that this is all about forming an eco park. It is not. The parish does not want to be in the trash hauling and collection business. Our contract sets up that the people get the best service at the lowest price. That's all we want. That's all we're going to do. We have not purchased the land for the for the waste transfer station in a comb, and then look at buying land of 500 acres to build an eco facility. We're not doing any of that. And as far as I'm concerned, we need to make, uh, uh, approve my motion and move forward on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bender? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, uh, just a few things. I have to say, because I was involved many years ago when I was on the Slidell City Council with uh, an RFP for all of the homes in the city of Slidell. And even back in the year 2000, 2001, uh, there were about 8,800 homes at the time. Uh, and um, 
you know, it is a process, the RFP for this type of uh, uh, collection works well. You, you, get to, you get to balance out price. The prices came in relatively even, relatively, but you get to, price, you get to balance out what are you getting in addition, the intangibles, okay? I want to, I have to say this because I know from going through that, it, it is an enormous amount of work. So uh, I, I'm not trying to blow smoke, but I have to congratulate our colleague, Mr. Belisario, because I know he's put in a lot of work, no matter which way the residents feel on the vote. I do want to say this too, though. The, there is, there is a, a byproduct benefit to the citizens and to the parish, okay? And this is, this is what it is. It's not on this list, but I know Gene and all of us are aware of it. If you take three sets of garbage companies out of subdivisions with the weight that they carry, and you put one in there, we're going to extend the life of our streets, of your streets, okay? There's no question about it. It just so happens that we're going through our capital budgets right now as council members looking at what our funding is for streets and so forth. And in looking at mine, and to give you an idea, uh, and I'm not trying to get off the subject, but we, we've heard the national news, we've now had three cities go bankrupt in the United States. Money is tight. Uh, fortunately, uh, I think we, we've done a good job through the years working with our citizens to, to make overall good decisions. But, um, the, um, the amount of money that we're going to save, right now, the projects in my district that, that could use immediate money, the amount of money that I'm able to get, which is my fair share, okay, it, I'm getting every penny of what my district deserves, is 45% of what we could get right now. So we have to prioritize street repairs, those other ones will get done, but we have to work it on a four to five year plan. But imagine if we are participating in the destruction of these streets quicker. The money's just not there, folks, to, uh, to, to, to be inefficient. So uh, is there a second on Mr. Belisario's motion? Yeah, Chris, yeah. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to support it. Thank you. Mr. Canulet. Yes. Uh, this, this project originally came out of Crossgates out of me and Jean's district. We worked on the first one. And, and let me tell you, uh, in my first four years, I've, I got phone calls about garbage. They missed my house. Uh, when are they going to pick this up? My poor staff. It's like, I bet you we called eight different haulers. It's like eight different people coming in there picking up garbage. Well. It's hard to get a guy that does 25 homes in a neighborhood to come back. They just don't want to do it. What, what this has done, it has made everything extremely simple. And it gives us limitations and expectations of what we can expect to happen. When we, when we did this contract, we, we picked up recycling. We picked up the other type of garbages. And the best thing was it came on Tuesdays or third, whatever days they would come, they were always there. And if they missed a house, they can't say, well, I'm not in that neighborhood this week. They had to go back and they have to go back and get this house according to the contract. I mean, these guys, we can lock them in. We can tell them what kind of truck they got to have, how clean it's got to be. There's no excuses. It's easy to pawn off 15 or 20 homes, but it ain't easy to pawn off 1,800. They just can't do it. So the level have services went up 100 percent since we started this i have not had one phone call from a constituent about garbage pickup none so it has worked and we're going to develop the rfp and we're going to let everyone's going to get a chance to have a say in this i mean this is we're not going to accept an rfp that's like gene's talking about if it's 50 dollars a home we're not going to accept that we're going to work out the best possible deal with the best possible services it's just that simple. So this is a really good, good start. 
Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. Nothing's perfect, but we're going to continue to work till we get it as best as we can. So uh, I'd like to go ahead and just move on. This well, time. I think Mr. Falcon needs to speak. He yeah, I've just got one quick question. In Mr. Bright's testimony, uh, he raised the question about a solid waste management plan and left me with the idea that somehow this was going to be in contradiction with some existing plan that's in place. Is that, can someone uh, help me out with that? Is there an issue? Is there some solid Mr. waste management Gordon. plan out there that's... Greg Gordon. <coughs> Greg Gordon. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Gordon, Greg Gordon, to. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Good evening. <laughs> Greg, what's. Uh, uh, well, we have the uh, solid waste management plan. Uh, we did it uh, about two years ago. I did a lot of public presentations on it. It does have an eco park facility uh, component as it. Uh, however, that plan was really also about the state of solid waste uh, in St. Tammany Parish, plus some ideas of what we could do in the future to solve various issues. Uh, the things that we're doing that's going on with the garbage service district is not tied into building in some momentum to implement an eco park portion of the plan or anything like that. So, and as you know, I think the gentleman mentioned about the uh, eco park uh, issues being taken off uh, the website. What it was originally was the RFP. The parish put out an RFP uh, it was a little too detailed. Uh, we pulled it back. We were going to do another one, but then other mitigating factors with other transfer stations and other issues came about, and we, it's been shelved, basically probably terminated for, for the time being or the foreseeable future, uh, probably very long term as a matter of fact. But the report, which covers solid waste services throughout St. Tammany Parish, is still on the environmental services page on our website because it had a lot of useful information. A lot of people like it. People refer to it on a consistent basis. So it stayed up there. It's a report that the parish government paid for. Uh, it's, and so I guess we figured that it would be good just to stay so to be, be up there for the information purposes that it has in it. But it's, it's not like a master evil plan. Okay. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Gordon. Um, Mr. Belisario, I want to ask one question. Sure. Is there a contract uh, that uh, you went through the RFP process already? Not for, the, not for this one. We, the, all we have done with this one okay. is I went through the Crossgate Utility one. I worked with Greg, and we want to prepare the RFP based on that because of the success and the tightness of that contract. It's been very successful. One of the things that this contract does it removes, removes a fuel cost adjustment as a separate component of your bill. You have a lot of vendors who are billing people with X dollars per month or by quarter, then they add the fuel cost adjustment on top. We use the CPI, which is fuel is a part of that component. The other commodities in the CPI reduce the impact of the fuel. We're into our third year now, the first two years, zero price increases. And you've got other people out there who are paying for fuel cost adjustment costs on their bills, and the people in Crossgates have not been adversely impacted by with the open competition, which allows companies to utilize the fuel cost adjustment thing. Right. This contract says, no, you weigh in with all the other commodities involved in the CPI calculation. So it, it's one of the ways that has reduced the cost to the residents. Okay. Uh, just... Okay. I, I have to tell you, Crossgates has got a better contract than my subdivision. Uh, uh, so y'all did a pretty good job. All right, any other comments from the council? All right, vote with your lights on the, on the uh, ordinance. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Okay, thank you. Ordinance calendar number 48. One ordinance establishing a speed limit of 35 miles per hour on Crennel Road. This is in Ward 7, District 7. Mr. Groby, second by Mr. Tanner. Vote with your lights. Motion is unanimous. Two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4802. Ordinance to revoke a portion of an unopened. Uh, unnamed right-of-way located south of Cherrywood subdivision <coughs> ward 9 district 9 so moved second by Mr. <coughs> Stefancic vote with your lights motion is 
Motion is unanimous. Two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4803, ordinance to amend ordinance council series number 9-2114 to approve location change for one polling location. Mr. Dean. Second by Mr. Thompson. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous. Two absent. Ordinance calendar number 4804, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 51.27 acres located north of Penn Mill Road, west of uh, Quave Road, north of uh, U.S. Highway 190 from A1A to A3, Ward 3, District 3. Mr. Thompson, second by Mr. Falconer. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 4805, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify, oh, excuse me, I'm, ordinance calendar number 4806, ordinance, huh, I jumped over it, or is it? No, you didn't, you were right. You're okay. Number 23. Okay, it looked like it was the same thing. <laughs> All right, <laughs> ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> ordinance calendar number 4805, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 51.27 uh, acres located north of Penn Mill Road, west of Quave Road, north of uh, US 190, uh, from A1A to uh, PUD, Ward 3, District 3. Mr. Thompson, and second by Mr. Falconer. Vote with your lights. That's what threw me off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 4806, ordinance to amend parish code of ordinances, chapter 16, article 1, section 16-001, curfew at North Shore Beach Park to include rules and regulations for the beach. So moved. Mr. Arteague, second by Mr. Bender. Vote with your lights on the ordinance. Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, under nominations, nominate... Uh, Item number one is to nominate uh, three members to appoint to the Board of Commissioners of St. Uh, Tammany Parish Rec District number 16. Mr. Smith? Uh, yes, we have one uh, name that, uh, Gene, you have that name you want yes, to Yes, a lady by the name of Pam McClellan. Okay. And, and that's it for now. That's it for now. Okay, so we're, we're gonna leave the, not, just leave it open as a nomination. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That will at least uh, let them establish that's, a quorum. That's approved. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We're gonna vote on it. It's not Paris wine. You know, just appoint this one tonight. You want to appoint this one, okay? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So the motion is to appoint? Yes, I'll second the motion. Okay, vote with your lights on the appointment. Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, second item is uh, number two, nominate three members to appoint the Community Action Advis uh, Agency Advisory Board one representative of low-income individuals, two from public and private organizations. Mr. Belisario. I have three names. I have Mr. Al Hamway to take uh, one of the business positions, and I have two pastors from the um, lower-income people, and they are, hold on, I've got the names here, uh, Pastor Carol Hughes of the New Beginnings Ministry and Pastor Rosalind Solomon of the Set Free Ministry. Okay. Uh, I have... Um, Mrs. O'Brien would like to, to nominate uh, Samantha Goodwin. Okay. So we have the nominations. Now this is a parish-wide board, so it's going to have to lay over for uh, until the next meeting. That's correct. So yeah. any other nominations? Okay. So we have. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Did yes, I misunderstand? Uh, Miss uh, O'Brien has a nominee. Yes. Yes. And what is that person's name? Samantha Goodwin. Thank you. Right. So we have four nominated. And we'll vote on this next month. Mr. Stefanczyk, you have a question. In the nominations from Gene, he said he had two people representing low-income housing, low-income personnel. Yes. Does that mean we're only going to select one of those? No, there's there's three openings. One that Al Hamway has, the two I've recommended, and uh, also Maureen's, which is three. The state, the federal law sets up the number of people you can have. And we use 15, but you can go to 31. And in the past, when I served on there, we had more in the people of need than what the number was. You're allowed to have that. In fact, we've had situations 
where someone who served either from the need section or the business section had an alternate. If they could not make, they went to the meeting and voted. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I, I'm not trying to put words in Mr. Stefanczyk's mouth, but I, I had the same question just for clarity. Maybe we could ask Mr. Hand. Uh, yeah, I'm reading one representative of low-income individuals, and, and you named two pastors, which I'm fine with. And, but you have two from public and private organizations. Is that a legal requirement that two actually be from public and private organizations? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not uh, familiar with the board. Uh, its composition is legally required, but it says clearly here two from public and private organizations. Well, I don't know why they would list that unless may, it maybe, was. Maybe while it's laying over, we could look That's into fine. This. I'll go check it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Dan. All right, you need to look at your packet um, according to what Mrs. Ford, it's in there. It lays it out. Yes. Okay, so we have the nominations in place. We have four people. We'll vote on this next month. Okay. All right, let's move on to number three, to nominate five members to appoint to the St. Tammany Parish Commission on Cultural Arts. Uh, the following individuals are eligible for reappointment, S uh, Simone Burke, Stephen uh, Cephalou, and Lisa Barnett. Uh, I know that uh, there are a number of other names that have been tossed around, and I'm going to open the floor up to, to uh, number one. I'd like somebody, to, if, if they so desire, to nominate these individuals. It's nominated by Mr. Canulet, okay. Uh, any other, uh, let's go with the, the rest of the names now, please. Uh, I, I have, uh, through Maureen O'Brien, Scarlett Roho Rohogan. Ro uh, Hogan. Ro Hogan. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Um, yes. Mr. Tanner, you have? Yes, I have. Uh, Kelly Elliott? Kelly Elliott? Yes, Kelly Elliott. Okay. And uh, I Mr. apologize. Falconer. I have a second. I apologize. What's that? I, have, I apologize. I, I have two names. Okay. The, the second me. one is Jennifer Bess, Chef John Bess's wife. Okay, and uh, I think Mr. Uh, Falcon, did you have some money? No. Unable to confirm. Okay, so how many nominees do we have here, all total? Now you have one, two, three, four, five, so Okay, it, it's going to have to lay over until next month, uh, and which time we'll be voting on those appointments. Mr. Chairman, just for clarification, I had someone who was potentially interested in the nominees still open? Um, yes, nobody's okay. moved to close them. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Number four, nominate five members to the parish uh, personnel board. Uh, following people uh, are on the list. Uh, Patrick Berrigan, Reverend Frederick Fields, Deputy Chief Donald Sharp, and uh, Joseph Allen are eligible for reappointment. Are there any other nominations? Mr. Gould, uh, if I may, and, and maybe Mr. Falconer can help me with this. I uh, meant to get in touch with um, Two, three, Lacey Toledano four. at the uh, West Chamber of Commerce. Um, a request had been made to them about a month ago to inquire with their membership if there was any interest in serving. The uh, parish charter uh, has provisions within it um, for appointments uh, on this board from nominees made by a variety of entities. Uh, the West Chamber is one such entity. Uh, they did not make any recommendations the last time appointments were made to this board, so I inquired with them if they wished to propose any nominees. I haven't heard anything, Mr. Falconer. Um, and so uh, I don't know at this point whether um, they are intending to do that. Uh, the council may want to consider tabling this matter until next month or postponing till next month. In the meantime, I will contact Ms. Toledano to see if there was any interest expressed. And if there isn't, then the council can choose to either make its nominations itself um, for appointment of individuals it may know um, to serve, or it may inquire with one of the other organizations 
that have made nominations uh, to see if they have any additional people. All right. Is the is the board functioning at this time? They have it. It is. Do they have five members now. Well, they have four. If you go forward with making, uh, I mean, there's a, they're active now with four. Yes, they can conduct business. And then the four that you have reflected that are eligible for uh, reappointment, um, assuming that those individuals are reappointed, then there would only need to be one more nominee appointed from whatever okay. source that ends up coming if, from. If the uh, council will indulge, uh, I would say we've got four nominees. It's got to lay over for a month anyhow, and then you come back and uh, find that last person in the next month. Steve, you got a question? Yes. Um, I believe that we have more than just the West Chamber who can submit nominations. Have we notified all those people that there is a vacancy here and we asking for all of them? No, sir. Um, I thought I, the East Chamber and some others. Correct. I contacted the West Chamber first yes. to give them the first opportunity to propose nominees since they don't currently have a nominee, if you will, serving. Um, and then if they were unable to propose nominees, then I was going to go to those other entities to see if they had any people that they wished to nominate. Who, who, was, who was nominated by the East Chamber? We're going back 12 years, sir. Right. Um, <laughs> I, I think, um, I, I don't recall I'm which I'm looking at individual. all the people's names here. The only one that could possibly be there is Pat Berrigan. Pat Berrigan. That's yeah. the only one that could and be. I think it, He's that, that old. And I, I think that was Mr. Berrigan. Um, there was another attorney on the uh, board, uh, McCord Carrico, and uh, he resigned. I, actually, Miss Brister had appointed him or nominated him back when she was a council member, um, but he's unable to continue serving. Um, so yes, I would okay. I would say by process of elimination, it was probably Mr. Berrigan. All right, so <clears throat> let's find another member by the next meeting, and then we'll vote on it. Marty, agreed. I, agreed. Yeah, I agree. I just have a question: Does this group ever meet? Okay. <laughs> Mike, thank you. you. I know you have been working on this, but we do have a hard time getting them to agree to a time to meet when we do need them to meet. So, um, and I know Can Mike's the board been, be abolished? Uh, can't you can't be abolished. Have, you can't abolish it. It's a home rule charter. But okay. you can, um, um, these are up for reappointment, and if you're going to, uh, well, that's not my business. I'm just saying it's difficult at times to get them to meet. Okay. Well, keep that in mind Mr. if you're Chairman. thinking about nominating somebody next month. Mr. Bender. Um, Ms. Pat, uh, I'll ask the question directly since uh, it came up. So are we, are we with, without, I'm not trying to generalize, okay, but between now and next meeting rather than discussing names, okay, could you all let us know? who can't meet ever because yes. why would we want to reappoint that person right uh, and I, I think um, uh, mr. Uh, I think you've been well, working on it haven't you mr. Savant I, uh, I've been working because we've asked on it along that. with yeah. uh, mark Ferrer the human Sur yeah. resources director and, and my understanding is that mark uh, contacted these individuals to confirm that they wish to continue serving no, but the question is... I understand the question. You do? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, if you do, all I'm, I'm trying okay. to say is they have been recently contacted. They do say that they want to continue serving. They however, just don't want to come to the meeting. However, <laughs> if that conflicts with your under, or somebody's understanding that no, no. even though they want to serve, right. they're not serving, then yes, some other action may need to be taken. Mike, but I can probably listen. add something. Mr. Bender, what the problem is, is the board only really meets when we have a grievance that reaches right. them. No, no. So I, they're I not a, they don't really meet regular. So it's not right. necessarily that they don't want to meet. It's trying to get them together in that time frame that we have per the grievance procedure. And right. so sometimes getting everybody together at one time, because we have a limited time for that grievance to be heard, is, it's more of a time frame issue of getting them together, not as much as them maybe not necessarily wanting to come or being able to come to the meeting. It's more time frame issue. No, yes, ma'am. And, and 
I, I used to be on the Civil Service Board in Slidell, and I know this takes the place of that. We have to have it, okay? And, and we would only meet when there was a grievance, okay? But the fact is, is we knew that in, if we were going to serve, we would get a phone call, and we had to meet within a certain time frame. So what is the time frame by law that they have to meet? There's just a specific time frame in order for the, the grievant to file the request for the hearing. And then um, the board sets the hearing date. So those um, requirements have been met uh, by the grievant. So now we're just trying to get a date that the board is able to meet. Um, and that's the difficulty. And, and I'm, end of, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Brewster. If I could just make one suggestion, and I will ask you uh, if you might consider tabling this. Let us work through it again. Let us yeah. work with them again and, you know, explain the issue and, and get an absolute from them. They are going forward and want to do it or not, and we can do it through the human resource person if, you, if right. that we, will work. If that's okay. We've got the nominations made. We just yeah. we got to let it lay over anyhow. That, that'll Come be Come back fine. to us, let us know, yeah. and if not, if somebody's got some some names they want to nominate it, it'll be open to uh, at that meeting it's perfect and we'll we'll have that information mr bender all next right. month what the information Thank you, you need mm -hmm. all right uh under appointments uh, resolution to appoint reappoint six members to the saint tammany parish library board of control um let's see nominations made on sick july i mean june 7th john dangene dr uh, agrio more uh, Argero Morgan, Barbara Morgan, Sylvia Muller, uh, Rebecca Taylor, David Stefferud, and uh, Mary uh, Reso. Renault. Renault? Okay, it's French. Renault. Um, we need one more nom to, to nominate. No, you don't need one more. Oh, I see. Excuse me. One more to be nominated. It's the note on my paper here. Does anyone have another nomination? Okay, well, right, we're going to have to hold a ballot. Some council members had expressed that they wanted to appoint someone else. I don't remember who that was. That's why I made that well, note, but apparently not. I'm not hearing any names. So we have six people on the ballot. We vote for, um, wait, we got seven people on the ballot, uh, and we need to vote for six. So if you would, pass out the sheets, and we'll come back to it. Uh, next item is a resolution to reappoint Sonny Swing, the St. Tammany Parish Fire Protection District. Mr. Thompson? And second by Mr. Dean. Vote with your lights on that. Do we have a ballot for the library board? Yeah, they've, they've got it. It's being copied back. now, and it's going to be passed out. We didn't know whether we are going to have another name on there or not. Motion um, is unanimous, one absent. All right. Um, Resolution to appoint three members to St. Tammany Parish Fire Protection District Number 12. I believe, uh, Mr. Sharp, you have some nominations to make. Yes. Turn your light on, please. Yes, I'd like to nominate Kenneth Kimberly, James Woodard, and reappoint Susie Labadette. Okay. Any other appointments? Second by Mr. Thompson. Vote with your lights, please. No, you need you need three members. Okay, so they did Kenneth. I'm sorry, yeah, Kenneth Kimberly. Hello, right here. Susie Labaday. What's the other one? And other ones, James Woodard. Okay, so the other two were not right. going to be. Okay, got gotcha. you. They weren't nominated. Mr. Sharp, you have a no up there. No, uh, I've been known to do that too. <laughs> That's quite unique when you make a nomination, you move on the, on the motion, and then vote against yourself. <laughs> All right, resolution to appoint David. Oh, I'm sorry. Now we need to vote. Please vote again on the last one to appoint Kenneth Kimberly, James Woodard, and <laughs> Susie Labadeau. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Okay. Um, next item is executive session. My understanding is this motion, this matter needs to be removed. removed. 
Yes, that's correct. Yeah, we got one more. Oh, uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. Resolution to appoint David and Lindsay, St. Tammany Parish Fire Protection District Number Four. Mr. Falcon. So moved. Second by Mr. Thompson. Vote with your lights on that. With a verbal from Mr. Canulet, motion is unanimous, two absent. Okay, uh, the next item is executive session. My understanding is this is supposed to be removed? Yes, that is correct. Motion to remove. Second by Mr. Smith. Vote with your lights on the removal. Mr. Sharp. <laughs> Motion is unanimous, two absent. All right, that concludes the regular agenda. We'll move on to items off the floor. Uh, we need a uh, motion to open up off the floor items by Mr. Tanner, second by Mr. Dean. All right, vote with your lights. This has to be unanimous to open it up. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Okay. Um, first item has already been heard. Second item is an, an emergency ordinance to impose a 30-day moratorium on the issuance of permits for construction or placement of building structures on property within a portion of voting precinct 914. This is in Ward 8, District 14. Mr. Smith. Second by Mr. Canulet. Vote with your lights on the emergency ordinance. Mr. Stefanczyk, Mr. Bender. <coughs> Motion is unanimous, one absent. Okay, uh, an ordinance to impose a six month moratorium. Um, uh, Basically the same thing as this, uh, the nine, uh, 30 day. You want to move on the introduction and I'll second by Mr. Canulet and that's all we need to do with that. All right, resolution to vacate and part of moratorium established by ordinance council series number 12-2738. I need somebody to move on that. Uh, Mr. Grovey, second by Mr. Stefanczyk. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right. Motion to refer to the Zoning Commission for a recommendation of the proposed uh, rezoning of Lot 12, Hickory Farm Subdivision, Addition 3 from A2 to A2 and a mobile home overlay, Ward, nine, uh, Ward 8, District 9. Mr. Belisario? So moved. And second by Mr. Artig. Vote with your lights. Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, ordinance approving the authorization uh, authorizing the execution of a memorandum of understanding between the Louisiana Department of State, Office of the Secretary of State and St. Tammany Parish Government and St. Tammany Parish Registrar of Voters Office for the establishment and operation of an additional parish early voting location. Mr. Falconer. So moved. All right, we have a second. Second by Mr. Canulet. Any discussion? Oh, I'm sorry. This is just for introduction? Sorry. Yeah, it's just for introduction. Okay. All right. Uh, and forgive me, Mr. Gould, if I may make a quick comment, that during the time period that this ordinance lays over, um, it, it would be extremely helpful if um, the council does decide to move forward on this matter, that a particular location uh, for this early voting location is identified and agreed upon. Uh, so that the proper proper information can be provided to all the parties. Yeah, I, I, I for one, uh, I'm not happy with the, the location, um, and I, I, I'm, I want us to take a look at that, see if we can't find a better location that will serve more people more conveniently. All right, so we have, that's done. Next item is ordinance. Yes, Steve. I thank you. If we're and not only should we get a different location, I mean all the. Story, all the discussion that we held at the uh, committee meetings 
had to do with, well, people coming across the causeway, it would be an easy stop to vote, all those kind of things. And then when you find out it's going to be at the trailhead in Mandeville, that's not an easy stop. That's really no. not, you know, don't get me wrong, but that's not the best place to have it. But the second piece, Mike, we need to clear up is how many of these elections are we going to have it for? Correct. And and I'm all in favor of saying, okay, uh, all parish-wide elections, we would have an additional one, and perhaps things that are surrounding right around the city of Mandeville. But I would be—I will be opposed to this if, in fact, we're going to open that kind of a, a, a situation for electing a, a, an alderman in Pearl River, and we got to have another voting site over in Mandeville for that. That don't make sense. You're and right. So, so they need to do that and, and clarify those points before they bring it to us. Right. Well, that, and that's a very good point, sir. And, and if you, if you, I, I don't want to speak for him. In fact, he might be in the office, the registrar voter, Dwayne Wall, um, and I had had that conversation along with Dina Lopez. That in the memo of understanding, Mr. Wall, would you like to come up and here. speak for yourself? I, I knew he was here earlier. If, if the uh, if the council in the memo of understanding wishes to establish, for lack of a better word, a zone of where an election would need to be on the ballot in order for um, that this particular location, wherever it may be, uh, will open, then I believe Dwayne's in agreement that that could be done as part of the agreement to make it clear that the scenario like you described doesn't occur. Because you're right, if, if the early location ends up being in the greater Mandeville area, um, the residents that are going to benefit arguably could come from between Lacombe and Madisonville, but you know, and and a, an, a, an area determined up north, like say I-12, um, but that would be it. And an election would have to ha be held within that area in order for that location to open. Okay. Mike, could you let Dwayne speak now? Dwayne. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, my, you've used up your time. Dwayne Wall, the Registrar of Voters. I did speak with legal counsel with the AG's office, Bill Bryan, and he said that as long as we establish those definitions that um, we could open it whenever um, based on however you set the definition. If you want it as a parish-wide or um, just to that local area, you could set those definitions. In speaking with Donald Villery yesterday, you know, the mayor of Mandeville, he very much wants this, especially for parish-wide elections and or, and he said city of Mandeville elections, he would be satisfied with that. So that's the kind of thing I'm looking at is somewhere where we can limit the amount of times we're going to have to have that open. I, yes, sir. I just, the we, initial we discussion this. was way back Mr. Wall, um, you know, when I, there was a lot of discussion on this and I had made the comment I didn't particularly care for the, for the location because I didn't think it was the most convenient place for the voters uh, uh, in, in the western side of the parish. I uh, realized that Covington's going up to the courthouse is, is uh, arduous. But, uh, you know, people that are, that are coming from other areas that are on the western side, uh, having to go all the way into downtown Mandeville, um, you know, that's, that's going to discourage people. You need to move this thing out to somewhere around North Causeway Boulevard uh, I know that uh, they may have looked at the uh, library by the, uh, uh, the shopping center. Uh, that may be a good location. You may want to look at this location. It's conceivably, this is a good spot. Quick on, quick off, off of the interstate for a lot of people. Um, this isn't just for Mandeville. This is for the area. Over that's here. correct. Okay. Parish wide. Correct. And, and that's the, whatever the pleasure of the council, you know, we'll work under those. Yeah, we'll, we'll I understand what you're trying to do, and, and I think I, I think we just got to get the right location. It's it's going to be convenient for everyone. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And we'll work on this this month. Yep. Mr. Goo. Yes, Mr. Tanner. I, I didn't know this was going. You know, we were up for discussion on this. Thought we'd just introduce some ordinances, but uh, you know, and y'all talked about location and what have. And I want to talk about costs. I think I saw. You. The next amendment is $30,000 of uh, general fund money, and uh, I just think we can better spend that $30,000 than we can for uh, making it convenient for um, 500 people 
or so to come to uh, vote in Mandeville instead of driving to Covington, where I have to drive to, to right. vote, and, which is, uh, you know, 14, 15 miles. So I, I just don't understand that. Thank you. Okay. We'll look at that as well. Um, Ms. Slifer, and then we'll close, and we'll close the discussion and move on. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Chairman Gould. Um, Sandra Slifer, president of the League of Women Voters here in St. Tammany, and that um, I'd just like to express our strong support for expanding the number of options that people have for early voting in this parish, that we are one of the parishes that have the, some of the highest numbers of people who do wish to vote early, and that as someone who does uh, I don't know, probably half the time vote early, that there are occasions when those lines at the courthouse get very, very, very long. So if we can move on this, I think that it would be um, a, a great benefit to the, the uh, voters here in St. Tammany. So I do ask that you all strongly support this and vote to approve it next month. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right, next item is ordinance to amend the 2012 operating budget amendment number six. Mr. Falconer. So moved. Second. All right, vote with your lights. Yeah, no, oh, excuse me, that's just, just for uh, introduction. All right, next item is a discussion of Lacombe Senior Center and Coast Council on Aging, St. Tammany. Mr. Groby. Hey, Mr. Chair, is this the last item we're working on tonight, so to speak? No, we're going to, I think there's no. going to be another. Okay, I'm going to end the meeting on a happy note. Um, over the last uh, four to six meet, months, rather, we've, uh, had emails going back and forth on COAST program. I got a little bit of good news tonight from Ms. Trubby. I'll let her explain it, but uh, it looks like the Senior Center in Lacombe is going to get some serious repairs made to it real soon. Trubby? Thank you. We had a meeting this we had a meeting this week with representatives of Coast and the school board as well, and they're going to start repairs on the Lacombe Center as of September 1. They're going to do some roof repairs. They're going to do a ceiling abatement on the inside of the building. They're also going to fix that walkway, which I think sort of s spurred all this on. on the sidewalk. <laughs> Thank you very much. September 1, and Coast is going to move the seniors to Lacombe and or Mandeville in for the one month that it's going to take to complete the repairs. Do they know where they're going to uh, bring the seniors for the meals during the midday yeah, meal? Mandeville or Slidell. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to thank the administration for uh, going out of the way to get this moved. Thank you very much. All right, are there any other items uh, off the floor from the council? Mr. Dean, Mr. Sharp, uh, Mr. Stefanczyk. Okay, uh, Mr. Dean, we'll start with you. I'd like to make a, a motion to nominate Mr. Pug Lauren to the um, uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. All right, we need, to, we need to vote to open up, uh, to put that item on the off the floor. And it requires a, a unanimous vote, so the motion is to Consider that item, second by Mr. Sharp. All right, vote with your lights. And it has to be unanimous. Everybody vote yes. Thank you. Motion is unanimous, two absent. All right, Mr. Dean. Uh, I'd like to make a motion. As you know, uh, Mr. J. Delahousie has been off of the planning and zoning since April, I believe, so I'd like to replace him with, with uh, Mr. Pug Lauren. Okay, d let me ask you a question. Do you want to suspend the rules and adopt? Yes, please. Since we've only had six people at the last zoning commission meeting? Yes. So the motion is to appoint, suspend the rules, and adopt. That's correct. Vote with your lights, please. Motion is unanimous with one, uh, two absent. All right, next consideration, Mr. Sharp. Yes, uh, I'd like to refer square 33 and 40 located uh, in the town of Claiborne for the purpose of rezoning to HC2 and plan review. Okay, so the motion is first of all to accept the item for consideration, second by Mr. Thompson. Vote with your lights on, on that. Once again, it needs to be unanimous. Mr. Arteague, Mr. Smith. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Okay, Mr. Sharp. Yes, I'd like to refer 33, square 33 and 40 um, in the town of Claiborne for the purpose of rezoning to HC2 and for plan review. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second by Mr. Thompson. Vote with your lights on the motion. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Uh, Mr. Stefancic, I believe you had something. Yes, I normally don't like to bring things off the floor, but uh, in this particular case, uh, I have a person who is uh, disabled and they're wanting to move into their trailer prior to uh, school year with their kids. And uh, the zoning commission approved this uh, zoning, uh, zoning change uh, Today we are on the ninth day, I believe, and tomorrow is the day that uh, that the appeals can be heard. I want to pre-introduce this so that it can pass next month. Otherwise, they have to wait till September. Okay, we so, need to vote on a consideration so, first. Right. Second by Mr. Canulet. Vote with your lights. Got to be unanimous. Motion is unanimous. One absent. Okay, vote on the motion, please. Uh, second by Mr. Canulet as well. Well, with your lights on, Mr. Stefancic's motion. Priya. Oh, well, you don't even have to do that. It's introduced. No, okay. Any other business? Oh, yeah. Yes. All right. Who won? Okay. The following people were elected to the uh, Library Board of Control. Uh, let's see, John Dangene, uh, Dr. Morgan, Barbara Morgan, Sylvia Muller, and uh, Miss uh, Mary uh, Rousseau. Oh, and then one more is Rebecca Taylor. Excuse me. Any other business? Mr. Sharp, you have your light on. Anything else? Uh, no, sir. All right. Well, I've considered that a one, motion to one adjourn. More th one, yeah, one more thing. I I'd like to say hello to Mr. Hall sitting at home watching <laughs> TV. <laughs> in, yep. in honor of such a good job you've did these almost all of 10 years I've been with you, we finally had a meeting without having to have appeals. <laughs> so I hope your TV made it through the day. So. <laughs> Well, you know, he did, he did tell us that he was going to sit back in his easy chair throwing popcorn at the TV screen and drinking Michelob Ultra. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. So moved.